We want to define things with the words that we know. So if we want to take an idea, we want to shove it in a box that we already understand. And when we get something like this, this is a new opportunity for a new type of transportation vehicle to be recognized. It doesn't fit into those boxes for those reasons. So how did the aerodynamics and solar constraints shape the earliest sketches? Because you have lots of sketches. Yes, so even the earliest sketches are building upon the basic shape. You need a kind of, you need a, a good flow over the top, but most importantly, you need to manage the flow underneath the vehicle as it's in ground effect. It's not a free stream, you know, aerodynamic body that you get in like aircraft or, you know, anytime you're out of ground. So that is, uh, that's the starting point. For, for our novice in the audience, can you give a little definition of what ground effect is and why we care about it? It's the body relative to a, a, a plane surface and how the movement, the movement over that surface and that body does not rise up into the free stream, it's stayed planted. That that's essentially what ground ground effect is. It's that you're you're close to the ground. Airplanes have it as well. And I'm I'm not an expert in in you know aero aeronautic engineering, but I am an enthusiast and have built a lot of ironically that's that's kind of what led me to this project. I built a lot of high performance but low speed ultra ultra lightweight model aircraft. Cool. Understanding just how slow you know, um, I mean, weighing like three quarters of a gram, right? Really, really, uh, it's a really esoteric hobby that I hope to get back into, you know, maybe in retirement someday. Let's dive into that for a second. As a designer, how important is it to have those esoteric hobbies for inspiration, for gaining knowledge base? I, I think broadly you want, designers are naturally curious and they're not satisfied with the, the result. And even if it seems impossible, you might get close. And it's very different from, you know, kind of the logic of engineering where it's like, I just want the numbers to work, two plus two equals four. And it's like, yeah, but if we add in another thing, like designers will stay up all night trying to create new new questions instead of just, okay, I've finished, I, I, I've satisfied the, the equation. So that natural curiosity, I think, brings a lot of people to this profession who have unique hobbies. One of the things that I've, it's not always an indicator, but a little bit of a, of a, let's call it a red flag, is if someone's too much into cars, like especially old cars, because they can't see past the past, literally. They can't imagine right. like something other than spin. And we see this even in designs of, you know, kind of the, the retro designs. And then they, they interview the design team and they interview the people like, yeah, it's, it's just like the past, just like what I wanted, but it's modern, it's bigger, it's you know, easier to get in and out of. Okay, but that's a dead end street to me. 